There is a lot which has happened after the birth of Node.js. So any individual who is coming over here want to understand the Node.js ecosystem and how it evolved from time to time. So this video will help you a lot. So Node.js was the first JavaScript runtime which came into the picture, which improved a lot of developer, I would say, experience. Before Node.js, the front end was completely based on JavaScript, but on the server side, you have to opt for other languages like, you know, Java, Ruby, PHP, and others, right? But Node.js came into the picture, providing you a runtime in which you can easily, you know, execute JavaScript on the server side. And this is what unified your front end and back end languages and improved a lot of more developer experience. And this is, I would say, improved a lot of startups. The reason was that they have to hire only developers who know about JavaScript, and then they can easily, you know, move those resources into front end and back end, depending on the scenario, right? But there was one situation in which Node.js failed. And that was, I would say, the HTTP module of Node.js, right? Now writing, I would say all those CURD APIs using those HTTP module built in Node.js is a very tough job. And you can see that you have to write a lot of boilerplate for just creating all those basic CURD endpoints, right? If you scroll down, you can see that I'm having a CURD endpoint in which I'm getting updating and deleting all those items and writing this boilerplate, uh, boilerplate code was a lot more difficult by using that HTTP, I would say, module in Node.js. So this is where I would say Express came into the picture, right? So Express was a framework which was built on the top of Node.js HTTP module, which I would say gave a lot of a good developer experience in which you can, you know, write a lot more less code and create all those content points, right? So if you come into the official, I would say, site of Express, you can see that this is a lot more simpler and easy to, I would say, write code in which you can go and create all those cut endpoints, right? And this is where I would say people started, I would say, shifting towards ExpressJS, right? But ExpressJS was also having one critical problem, and that problem was that it was unopinionated. Now, this unopinionated means that anyone can write Express applications in their own way, right? Someone can call these as crowd, someone call them as controllers. So it has a lot of, I would say, flexibility, right? And by flexibility means that you have to build your own folder structure and own, I would say, architecture of your backend applications. And that's where I would say any new coming resource into your startup would have to understand what's the structure being used over here, okay? And that's where I would say Express was having a lot of problems, right? And then for solving this issue, this Nestrious thing came into the picture, right? And they told you that they will give you a lot more, I would say, less boilerplate code. And they also standardize all the scenarios, right? So let's come to, you know, Nestrious documentation. And here you can see that we can write all those controllers by using these annotations or decorators. And what this did was that this standardized the approach of building backend applications by using Node.js ecosystem. So any developer coming from any background having the knowledge of Node.js have to write the controller in this way. There is no other way to write controllers in Nest.js. And that's what standardized all the scenarios. And apart from that, Nest.js also came up with this providers things, which is a sort of a dependency injection mechanism, which is built into Nest.js. And this also helped a lot of, I would say, developer experience. Uh, to be fair, they just, I would say, copied the, a lot of more infrastructure from Java Spring Boot ecosystem, in which you have a lot of, you know, dependency initial mechanisms and all those decorator stuff, right? So they did the same with Nest.js and this is why a lot of industries or startups are switching from Express.js to Nest.js. The reason is quite simple because Nest.js has standardized all the scenarios in which any developer can come in and can easily understand the code base within seconds and can directly jump to their tickets and start developing, right? And if you really want to contribute to open source, uh, uh, I would say repository, which is built on Nest.js. So I will refer you to this uh, doc most, uh, I would say a repository, which is an open source alternative to Notion, I would say. So this is, I would say a document uh, platform in which you can manage multiple documents. It's sort of in like, I would say Notion like interface in which you can build all that, I would say in documents and you can contribute to it. And the good part of this is that it is completely built on Nest.js on the backend side. So if you come into this app, uh, you can see the server side. If you click on the server, you can see that it's, it's more like a Nest application, which is built on the backend. So if you really want to enhance your skills in Nest.js and want to improve, so do contribute in this Stockmost repository, which is completely open source, and you can build a lot more tools using this as well. So hope this will help you out.